guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well so for today's video as you can tell by the title i'm doing a get ready with me and basically it's a recreation an updated version of my old get ready with me which hit or has hit 85k views which to me is like mind-blowing that 85,000 people have either pressed and watched a small snippet of my video or the full 29 minutes. I know a lot of my subscribers have come from that video because all my other videos it can stem from like 200 views to 7k views but that one video has just got like 85k views and it just keeps going. That's what people want to see from me like get ready with me, makeup, hair. This look is basically the same but I would say it's just a little bit more natural. I don't have individual lashes on anymore. I took most of my filler out and my lips. I do have half a million that's it and um, my my hair's not as long, I mean it is still super long, but it's not as long as my last video, so yeah, it's a slightly a bit different. As well as the makeup, I have done things slightly different, used a few new products in there, so it's a little bit different. Like I said, it's updated, so there is going to be a few things that are different, but I do look back at that video and I do cringe a little bit at, I don't know, the way I was on camera and my editing, but I mean I'd never delete it because it's kind of like, you look back at things and you grow from that and you look back to kind of when you started and yeah, I think I had like 100 subscribers then and I've got 1,100 now I think, which might not sound a lot to you guys, but when you're sat behind the camera filming and people are watching you, that's a lot of people. Okay, so for the first step, I am gonna start off with brows and I have just zoomed you in just a little bit more so you can see a bit closer. I don't like zooming in too much because Sometimes it can kind of go in and out of focus, so this angle I think is perfect. I am using the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat in the shade Natural Brown, and the tip looks like this. It's not going to focus. So it's not too thin, but it's not too thick. This product is super, super blendable. It's really creamy and that's what I love about it. Um, so first I'm going to just start off by brushing my brows up. I have had them laminated, so mine brush up quite easy and quite nicely. I'm just going to pop a few strokes through, kind of creating hair like, like natural hair like strokes. I'm just really gentle towards the front. And always blend out as you go. You can see that my brows are quite fluffy there and that is because of the brow lamination. It just has relaxed my hair so I can get more of a fluffy look. Also, I did forget to say that I have already prepped my eyelids and carved out my brows. When I say carved out my brows, I don't like it to be too intense. Um, and I've used a flat brush, the Doll Beauty. Oh God, it doesn't have a number on it anymore, but just the flat brush by Doll Beauty. Um, Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and the Flawless Filter. I am just gonna go back in with whatever's left on the flat brush and just tidy up underneath my brow. Okay, so next up I am going to do the eyes and I'm going to go in with a bronzer as always through the crease. My new favourite bronzer is called Shady Biz and it's the Sunstalker bronzer from Fenty Beauty. This bronzer is amazing. It's amazing for the face and I love it through the crease. It's like that perfect in-between shade, not too orange, not too kind of muddy or greyish. It's like the perfect bronzy tone. So I'm going to pack it on a fluffy brush and pop that straight through my crease. I do like quite a big fluffy brush for this because I do want more of a blown out look. That is just more my style. Um, and this is something I do all the time if I'm applying makeup. Obviously I don't do this day to day if I'm not wearing any makeup but um, night out, if I'm going out in the day, if I'm going out in the night, this is the first step I always do. As I'm blending it out, I am bringing it all the way to my temples because we can clean that up later, but if you want that blown out look, you do have to carry it out quite far. 
It did take me a while to learn this because I was too scared of kind of bringing it out too far, but practice makes perfect. And to make the colour stand out more, you want to kind of dab on like I am here and then blend. Gives a little bit more of an intense look. So I just love that. I just love how that looks on its own. So that's the eyes so far. And like I said, I would just apply that and be good to go. But I am going to apply something else on top because I think it just gives that extra glam if it is like a night out or an occasion. So I am just going to go in with Urban um, Decay Space Cowboy, which is just the most dreamy pigment ever it kind of gives that oh, what's it what's the word like almost like metallic wet look on the lid which i am all about that i'm not into anything too heavy so just a little bit of this pressed on top of the bronzer just gives such a pretty look I have ended up just getting a brush, quite a precise one, and making sure it doesn't go above that crease. Focusing it more on the inner and centre, and then softly just kind of blending it in. Then with the first brush you used for the bronzer, and just kind of blending them both together, and then kind of building on top and going in again. Now this isn't something I would do every day, this is kind of like my go-to night out look recently because it's quick, it's easy, it's really pretty, it's really girly, it's really glam. Um, I did it for my mum's birthday just gone and I loved it. I got a few compliments actually because I just think it's really subtle but really pretty and yeah I just thought I'd have to show you in this video because everyone needs this pigment in their life. So now I'm going to go in with the NYX Jumbo Pencil, please ignore how messy that is but um, I do prefer the Jumbo ones because I find that they're a bit creamier but I'm just going to apply this as close to the lash line as possible quite thinly and then towards the end a little bit thicker i'm not going to go all the way in though i am just going to do the outer edge okay so i haven't blended yet but you can see i have applied just on the outer corner of the lash line quite close to the lash line you don't want any gap in between the lash line and the eyeliner i have used dark brown instead of black i just find black a little bit too heavy for me personally i think just because i'm quite fair but if you have darker hair darker features then black will probably look really nice and um, but i would recommend maybe more of like a dark brown for people who are a bit more fair and then just going to blend it out with a brush like this and i'm going to wing it ever so slightly now you want to be really really gentle when you're blending this out and um, because you don't want to move the product too much you just want to kind of smoke it out if that makes sense The key to this is just kind of going really, really slowly and not working too fast. And don't worry about it being too precise because we are going to go in with a white or cotton wool board just to clean up the edge in a bit. So as you can see, it has just made that quite crisp, which is how I like it. So next, I'm going to go on to mascara. I actually have recently just given myself a lash lift. So my lashes are so lifted right now. They're a little bit too lifted. I should have gone for like a medium lift rather than such a heavy lift because I can't apply any lashes at the minute, which to be honest, I never wear strip lashes at all they just don't really suit me Um, i wear kind of just the clusters at the end and really blend it in so it gives me that more of a cat eye look so next i'm gonna apply the flawless filter by um i nearly said armani it's charlotte tilbury this stuff is filter in a bottle honestly if you want that kind of glowy dewy look without too much coverage just day to day this is amazing this doesn't really give you coverage it's just nice if you want that 
base that is going to kind of even out your skin tone and give you that glow so it's great for people who don't like wearing makeup and just want that dewy kind of look um, but it is seriously like a filter in a bottle I like just wearing this day to day to work um, like I said if I don't want to wear too much foundation and I've got it in the shade 4.5 and it's classed as medium I think I just pat this on See how nice is that just for day to day? Um, and then on top, I'm going to apply my new favourite foundation, which is the Too Faced foundation, um, Born This Way. I've wanted to try this foundation for so long. I'm a bit late to the party, but it is amazing. It is a medium to full coverage, so I use a little bit as I just don't really suit full coverage. And I got mine in the shade Nude. I am just going to apply this with the same brush. I do sometimes apply with a beauty blender, but do you know what? I'm not going to lie. They're all dirty and I can't be bothered getting up and washing it. So for the concealer, I'm going to go in with my Tarte Shape Tape in Medium. And then I'm going to go in with my new favourite concealer, which is the Hourglass. And this is the Shame Cream Vanish, and I did get a little bit too light, so I still have to mix my tart in. But it's fine because they work really well together, but um, I don't know, I feel like with the Hourglass Concealer, I absolutely love the consistency and how it blends out. But the shades, I don't find are great. I feel like they do quite a big jump for the lighter tones. I'm not too sure about the darker tones. So I'm just going to apply down the side of my nose a little bit and all the way up. in with this on top completely forgot I did actually just have to wash my beauty blender for this step so and um, clean beauty blender and just blend that out I kind of let it sit on my skin for a good minute before I blend in <laughs> that looks crazy I'm just gonna leave my concealer to kind of sit into the skin before I um, put powder on top. But first, I'm gonna apply the Fit Me Maybelline Concealer as my cream bronzer. And I used the shade, I don't know. I will have to leave a link down below because it's rubbed off. I'm just gonna apply that here and on my temples and forehead too. I'm gonna apply a little bit under my nose and slightly down the side of the tip of the nose. I don't like to bring it all the way at the top, me personally, because I have quite a thin nose anyway, so sometimes it can just look a bit too thin and look a bit silly. My new favorite thing is to kind of curve it like that. So you will look a little bit crazy until it's blended. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take this brush from Morphe. I'm not 100% sure what it's called. As I'm blending, I'm kind of blending up rather than down because I want everything to kind of be lifted. You want to really blend it into the hairline as well because there's literally nothing worse than seeing that cakey orange line, especially if you ginge like me. Um, whatever's left, I kind of just blend it onto my nose because I like that kind of sun-kissed sun look on my nose. Um, but yeah, I am really loving this step in my makeup routine at the minute. I could not not use like a cream bronzer. Um, but yeah, I'm just loving this concealer instead of an actual cream bronzer. Right, so to powder, I'm actually going to be using like a flat brush like this. Well, it's kind of flat. Um, I prefer kind of patting in my powder rather than using a beauty blender. So many people use a beauty blender, but for me personally, I don't like that heavy baked kind of look. So I like to use a powder brush, just what works for me personally. And I like to do this with clients as well. Before you do go in with your powder though, make sure you go back in with a beauty blender if 
the last product you used and it was the concealer and make sure you kind of dab in the concealer again because you don't want to powder on top of any creasing because that's how it will set i'm going to go in with the laura mercier translucent powder i do just have a little sample pot here because i've run out of my big one but i've moved back on to the um laura mercier powder um, I've gone off the Huda Beauty a little bit. I do this, I go through phases of using things. Before I go straight under the eyes, I'm gonna take the powder and just press onto my palm really lightly so that it's an even finish. I'm now just going to go in on the side of my nose a little bit heavier. Right, so next I'm going to apply blush and my favourite blush at the minute. I think I used this in my last video. So it's not at the minute, it's been my favourite blush for about a year. Um, no, actually, I used the Tarte one in that video. So this is called Life's a Peach and it's just L'Oreal. It's honestly the most gorgeous peach. And if you can see, I mean, ignore the disgusting packaging now, but it does have flecks of shimmering, so it gives a really nice sheen to the cheeks as well, which I personally really like. So I'm going to go in with a Doll Beauty angled brush. Um, I'm not too sure the name of it, but... So with blush, I do not like to put it on the apples on my cheeks. I used to, but I just don't like that any. Not that I don't like it, I'm just not into that trend anymore. I prefer applying it like here and up. I did just apply a little bit of that blush on my nose as always because I do like that kind of sun-kissed look. Um, I'm then going to go in with my Airbrush Flawless Finish, nearly said Flawless Filter, by um, Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Medium. And I'm going to just apply this to my forehead here. This powder is a joke, honestly, if you want that kind of flawless, smooth skin, this powder you need, you need, need, need. I apply this just around my chin and here, and then always just dust it over my forehead, because it, it does set, but at the same time, it lets your skin breathe through it. It goes, gives a little bit of coverage, and yeah, it's just, it's like a filter again. I love all the Charlotte Tilbury stuff skin's done I'm gonna go back in with the jumbo eye pencil and apply it I've already done it on this side you can see I've just applied it ever so slightly on the waterline just on the outer edge I'm not going all the way in I'm gonna do it on this side and then I'm gonna get my Fenty bronzer again and just kind of pop a little bit underneath the eye and um, ever so slightly kind of buff underneath just so it doesn't look bare underneath tiniest amount of that bronzer on and I'm blending it right in with this bronzer I am going to go over the cream bronzer I completely forgot to do that before just to kind of set that into place so I'm going to do my lips now and I'm just going to take off any excess foundation or lip balm that I've got on my lips and I'm going to go in with my favourite lip liner of all time. It's called Locked Up by Sleek. I completely forgot about this until I used it like a couple weeks ago. And I was like, why haven't I been using this? It's my favourite. Um, I'm going to slightly overdraw my lips. I'm just using the Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme. Um, this is just my go-to. I don't really wear lipstick. Now and again, I'll wear like a cream NYX lip base and then pop this on top. But I am just really enjoying lip liner and lip gloss at the minute. So 
So yeah, that is the Too Faced Injection Extreme. It doesn't even tingle my lips anymore because I'm so used to it, but... So I've just applied mascara on the bottom lashes. I'm now going to take my Vitamin E Hydrating Mist and... I'm going to move on to my hair now and I'm going to do the same as I did in the previous video, my previous get ready with me. And I'm going to do my go-to bouncy curls using my GHD wand or curler or tongue or barrel, whatever you want to call it. It's a tongue. Yeah, it's got the clip. Um, this is my go-to look. This is my go-to hairstyle no matter what. Um, it's just a safe option for me. It's quick, it's easy, it suits me and yeah. By the way, how much nicer is the light now? It is nearly six o'clock so I think I need to start filming around this time because this lighting is amazing. Before it was a bit but a bit dull so I apologise for that anyway um, make sure that you've prepped your hair with um, heat protection spray and then I'm going to section in three start off with the back of my hair and I'm going to get sections probably about this thick so on this side of my face I'm going to blow out this way and then on this side of my face I'm going to blow this way and like I explained in my last video I like to go over the hair like twice to get it all heated and then I like to twist as I curl oh it's hard to kind of see without a mirror because normally I have a mirror in front Make sure that the hair is flat to the um, barrel as well. So once it's done, I like to hold it like this and just cup it in my hand. It will be quite hot, so just be careful. Ah, it is hot. So I've got a little bit left, so I've killed a majority, of, well most of my hair is done, it's literally just a few bits at the front which I thought I would save to show you, um, because when I get to the front I get my Dyson and I either get this attachment or actually do prefer the round one but I couldn't find it when I was looking then so I'm just going to show you with this one because I will get a similar effect and what I like to do when I get to the front of my hair and I've got about this much left I like to get a volume on my root here so I'm going to get a chunk of my fringe well, not fringe but you know what I mean my part in and I'm going to get the Dyson on the highest heat see that gives a little bit of bounce there and a little bit of body I don't want a middle I don't want a side part in I want a middle so it's not as flat to my face as it was before I probably would go over it a few times if I was actually going out so go over the hair a few times so all the hair gets heated and then wrap if you've got longer hair it is harder so you've got to make sure you wrap all of it in to the tongue into the clip for it to get heated through if you want the bounce, then you need to heat the hair from about here. Because if you just curl like the end bit, it's just going to kind of like drop and curl at the end. You're not really going to get that bounce. Definitely focus on twisting all the hair in and making sure all the hair gets heated. Don't twist from the root because you don't want a kink. You want to start twisting about here. And sometimes I flip around, flip my hair around like that because it's so long. Oh, that one's just come loose, but I think it'll be okay. And kind of leave a little bit of a gap between your root 
It might look super curly at first, but that's kind of what you want because otherwise they're gonna drop and not last. So you want them quite tight to begin with. You can see that's got so much volume. The one thing that I don't do anymore, which I've shown on my other video, is kind of get a volume by doing this at the root with the curling tongue. And it definitely does get you volume. I can imagine it being quite damaging to your hair if you keep going over that area with a curling iron because this part of your hair on every one it's quite weak it's not as thick as the rest of your hair and um, so I would recommend in getting like a heated brush to get your volume at the root rather than using this because this is quite like intense heat whereas the Dyson or a heated brush isn't so bad okay so this is the finished hair now I'm not gonna lie I probably would leave it tight like this until I'm ready to go out if I'm ready in advance. Now if I'm in a rush and I need to go out I probably will make sure that it's not hot because you don't want to brush your curls out while they're hot otherwise they'll just drop. Comb through really really gently you don't want to drag on your curls otherwise you will completely lose the bounce um, and I'm just going to show you a few other tips and tricks to get more volume. So another thing that I like to do is shake at the root like this to kind of let the curls loosen up a little bit and you can see how much more volume that gives. I mean, that's a joke. And then another one, flip it upside down, give it a little shake at the root. Now this gives like crazy volume. It depends how much volume you want. This is good if you don't have a lot of hair. Like, I don't really need to do this because I've got I've got quite a lot of volume already, but doing that up and down method might not work for everyone's hair. So you can use a back combing brush. So yeah, this is the finished look. These are the finished curls. I'll show you close up. They will drop a little bit more, but I'm quite happy with them like this because like I said, they will drop by themselves. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this updated um, video. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as you enjoyed my old one because like I said that old one got 85k views and it's still going and I just find it crazy so yeah I hope you do enjoy this updated version of my go-to curls and my go-to kind of glam makeup but I just want to say thank you so much for watching and thank you to all my new subscribers. I've officially hit 1000k which might not sound a lot to you guys but it is a lot to me like to know that over a thousand of you have chose to press subscribe to watch little me it it's crazy though this isn't my job and nowhere near being my job i enjoy it so much as a hobby and because i do work full time i do have days where i'm like or weekends or weeks i'm like oh i can't bother filming but when i get a message through on youtube or instagram or a new subscriber it just gives me that little buzz inside and makes me think do you know what no i'm gonna film a video tonight or i'm gonna film a video next week because it just reminds me like i really do enjoy what i really do enjoy doing these videos i really do enjoy all things fashion and beauty and so yeah i just want to say a big thank you and i will see you all in my next video